Hello and welcome and welcome to Aid and Eyewitness. The Munch Union Way is an elevated urban motorway first opened in 1967. It was called Manchester's Highway in the Sky, even though it's not much higher than a double-decker bus. There's a building boom in progress along the Munch Union Way today, as more and more taller and taller residential towers are constructed. But is Manchester's property bubble about to burst? We are above the western end of what I'll call the Mancunian Way Extended Corridor. In the middle are the Wilburn Street Basin Apartments. The empty triangular area is now the Trinity Islands South Construction Site. While I was there, new information boards were being put up. The project is named Vista River Gardens, a name that in the past you wouldn't have associated with Manchester or Salford, but maybe with China. It's next to Regent Road, the A57. On the 7th of April, 2023, construction was in its early stages. Over to the right, beyond the retaining wall, is the River Irwell. On the 17th of May, work was proceeding. The concrete core has appeared on the left. We can see the name of the developers, Renica. Diggers were working on the foundations. Straight ahead is the A57 Regent Road Bridge. Now we're looking from that bridge on the 7th of April 2023. It's Good Friday, so the site is quiet. A solitary crane rises above the site. On the 17th of May, work was progressing well. I'll continue to document the project from these viewpoints as it proceeds. Since I first reported about Trinity Islands in 2021, the project has been revised. It won't now have the tallest tower in Manchester. That will appear not far away. More about that in a while. So as we look up into the sky, let's imagine how the towers will look when finished. Up there is the real highway in the sky. A United Airlines Dreamliner is on its way from Amsterdam to Philadelphia. Now let's turn our gaze towards the east and start to make our way along the A57 towards the Mancunian Way, which at both ends is bounded by railway viaducts. That's the Bridgewater Canal and the Castlefield District. Here we see the Hume Roundabout, where the A57 passes under the A56 Chester Road. Once there was a large roundabout here with a rickety flyover I used to love driving over in my old VW Beetle. The Grade 2 Star St George's Church was converted into a residential building in 2002. This apartment building is now covered in scaffolding for facade renovation. Will that happen with these new towers? Will they be covered in scaffolding for repairs 20 years into the future? Let's go on a time-lapse ride now along the Mancunian Way. The speed limit is normally 50 miles per hour or 80 kilometers per hour, but currently a 30 mile an hour speed limit is in place. There are two elevated sections, the original one from the 60s and another from the 90s. These railway bridges carry the lines out of Piccadilly Station. Let's head back along the Mancunian Way, passing by Ardwick, Chalton on Medlock, over Oxford Road, past MMU, Cambridge Street, Princess Road, Red Bricks, Hume Park. We can see a lot of trees. Manchester is full of trees from a viewpoint next to Hume Footbridge. Let's check the Circular Tower 360. In April 2023, it has reached pretty much its full height, 154 metres or 505 feet, just short of Blackpool Tower. Looking back to the 18th of July 2021, at that time cranes were in place to commence work on 360 and its neighbour, the Blade. The Elizabeth Tower was in its final stages. Those two white containers store concrete for the construction sites, brought in by an endless succession of lorries. On this site, Manchester's tallest tower is set to appear. In May 2023, it hasn't yet been approved. It will have 71 storeys and will reach 213 metres, that's 700 feet. There will be a sky pool and a top floor restaurant, but it looks like there will be no public viewing platform as I'd hoped. That's a big disappointment. This and all neighbouring towers are designed by architect Simpson Hall. This is how 360 looked on the 17th of April 2022. Only a few stories have been completed. Six months later, the building had reached around mid-height. Windows were being fixed to the lower floors. On the 8th of April 2023, it has reached its full height. Only a few more floors remain to be covered with exterior glazing. The familiar name Renica is visible at the top. Beneath the Mycunian Way, that section of wall covers what was a pedestrian underpass. I often used it on my way to and from the Arban Cinema, which predated the Corner House. The Corner House opened in 1985. The tunnel was sealed off when the Hume footbridge was built. Now we are looking east towards River Street Tower, a student residence designed by Simpson Hall. 
But what was there before? This concrete structure was to have been a car park, but it was abandoned around the time of the 2008 crash. It was demolished 10 years later. River Street Tower was completed in 2020. Now this is the view from a slightly different viewpoint. The new building is a taller and more ambitious structure than the abandoned one. The lower section has a rusted steel exterior. The material is named Core 10, that's C-O-R hyphen T-E-N. The tower reminds me of one of my Lego constructions as a child with shiny black bricks and transparent bricks. Three concrete columns support the front of the tower, but the area beneath them is currently fenced off. And now let's cross to the south side of the Mycunian Way and enter another world. The Red Bricks Housing Development, or the Bentley House Estate, was built just after the Second World War in an Art Deco style. The Red Bricks is a unique place populated by a mixture of people with a different profile to those living on the north side of the Mancunian Way. A more eclectic crowd, many of them creative types. I've read they feel overshadowed by those new towers and are worried that perhaps the Red Bricks will be compulsorily purchased, demolished and the site will have new towers put on it. That must not happen because the Red Bricks is a unique part of Manchester, a peaceful, well-loved place of community involvement, with beautiful gardens tended by the residents themselves. They even operated a cinema in the basement until the council closed it down because it broke health and safety regulations. The Red Bricks is a success story, unlike the infamous Crescents that once stood nearby. But that's another story. Now we're at the top of Princess Road. There was a roundabout here, but it was remodelled with a seemingly complex system of lanes. They remind me a bit of a go-kart track, but it handles the traffic more effectively than the old roundabout. Just beyond is the mixed-use co-living development by developer Downing, with three new 45-storey structures. Similar to nearby developments, lots of extra facilities are provided for residents. The development was designed by Simpson Hoare, who also designed the nearby Parkway Gate student residences. The pristine new road sign points to Ring Road East, Ashton on the line and the A65, which begins further along the Mancunian Way. The newly designed junction at the top of Princess Road has designated lanes and traffic signals for cyclists. The A57 runs between Liverpool and Lincoln. The Mancunian Way is the only section of it that's called a motorway, and it's called the A57M and the A635M. We can see how the original section shows mid-60s concrete technology. At our house we had a coffee table with legs shaped like that. Walking through the subterranean passage is like walking into the past, but maybe this one will be sealed up too. The Cambridge Street roundabout looks like Princess Road roundabout used to be. Will it also be remodelled? On the northwest corner, the new Madlock House student residence. Not very old, but it already looks a little dated. But on the southeast corner, the glass fronted MMU Faculty of Business and Law sparkles like a jewel. On the northeast corner, we can see how another new MMU building has progressed. Now we're on Oxford Road. That's the 1967 MMU John R. Dalton building. The Mancunian Way crosses directly over Oxford Road, dividing the MMU campus into two. On the other side is the Manchester. Technology Centre, right next to the Mancunian Way. On the south side is the new MMU Institute of Sport. It's interesting to speculate how many vehicles pass in both directions above Oxford Road every day. Oxford Road is reserved only for buses, cyclists and of course pedestrians. There are Dutch style cycle lanes on both sides. In the distance, on the bridge, two East Midlands trains pass each other. And just passing by is one of the all-electric buses introduced by Stagecoach. Let's walk into Grosvenor Square and take a look at what was there before the Faculty of Business and Law. It was a brick building, looks to be from the 70s, one of many replaced by newer buildings. Next to it is St Augustine's Church, the rare piece of modernist style church architecture built in the 1960s and listed. What's the connection with the Mancunian Way? Well, the original St. Augustine's Church stood on a site now directly underneath the Mancunian Way to the east of Oxford Road. The church was destroyed in the Second World War. Circle Square stands on the site of the BBC, now in Salford Keys, and appropriately, the multi-storey car park for Circle Square has large circular openings. Sitting on the top with great views of the Mancunian Way and the city centre is the Premier Inn Manchester City Centre Princess Street Hotel. Later, we'll see a dusk time-lapse from the car park. Shielding the highway, there are trees and bushes, and on the left we can see one of the newest buildings to appear next to the Mancunian Way. It's the Mazdar Building, part of Manchester University. The elevated section from the mid-60s continues over Upper Brook Street. We are now looking at the slip roads leading to the former Umis campus. 
That's the famous 1968 Concrete Society award plaque. The Concrete Society are still going today. On the other side of Brook Street is the westbound slip road that has no proper acceleration lane. I try and avoid it. On the south side of the Mancunian Way, these flats were originally built by Manchester City Council in the 1960s. They've been renovated in recent years. I know people who live around here. These flats are an attractive, convenient place to live, and with subsidised rents, they offer much needed affordable accommodation in the heart of the city. Now we are looking at the newer flyover. We can see how the technology has changed since the 1960s. The design of the supports is different. There are metal girders supporting the roadway, and that's a former billboard ad site. Watch out for my photoshopped advert later. Now we are on London Road, the A6. There used to be a very large roundabout here before the construction of the flyover. Since that year, a lot of vehicles have passed over the flyover and a lot of things have happened that we couldn't have imagined. This is the former BT building, later the McDonald Manchester Hotel. A new hotel is going to open shortly. The south facing end of the building directly overlooks the Mancunian Way. This is the River Medlock, looking towards Unite Students Mill Point, which is built around the curve of the river. This is how the site looked before and after construction. That's the old mill that was occupied by artists. It was demolished to make way for the new residences, here under construction in 2003. Someone has turned the end of motorway sign around, so it's facing the wrong direction. So what's the story with the A635M? The section of the Mancunian Way along the 1992 flyover was given the designation A635M, though for clarity it doesn't appear on road signs. Over at this end of the Mancunian Way is where the future will soon be taking shape. A new residential district is in planning, part of Mayfield, next to Mayfield Park. I'm glad I've managed to capture the empty site before construction. The eastern end of the Mancunian Way, now the A635, is bounded by another railway viaduct carrying the line from Piccadilly Station to London and the line to the airport. Let's take a short Google Earth flight back along the Mancunian Way. That's Mayfield on the right, Ardwick on the left, the A6, Chalton on Medlock, the former Umis site, Upper Brook Street, Oxford Road, MMU, Princess Road, the Red Bricks, Hume Park, Deansgate Gardens, the A56, Regent Road, and back to Trinity Islands. These drone images are courtesy of Peace Drone. Check out his excellent work on YouTube, link below. So what's going to happen with the Manchester property market? I've heard people say there's trouble ahead. Too many apartments and offices, and not enough people to fill them. And then there's Britain's unique economic challenges, as well as uncertainty in the world. I think back to 2007. The real estate that mattered to me was my website. In the first half of 2007, advertising revenue went up and up. But then mid-year, it dropped like a stone to an end-of-year low. Was that a foretaste of the economic crash of 2008? Maybe. So how's the ad revenue on my channel today? It's holding steady, though at a fraction of what it was then. So is the bubble about to burst? I've read some articles and had a think. My gut feeling is the bubble is not about to burst. Growth will continue. Manchester's economy is strong and I don't think developers would keep on building if they didn't expect a return on investment. But that's just my gut feeling. I could be wrong. What's more important? Smashing it in a well-paid job? Cash rich but time poor? Saving money? Investing in property? Making a good ROI? Or is it doing an essential job as a key worker? Caring for others? Saving lives? Or maybe being a musician? A creative artist? Or a writer? Living modestly, but enjoying career and creative satisfaction. Contributing to the arts and cultural scene. Helping to make Manchester what it is. And that's something you can't put a price on. People are paid at different levels. So living accommodation for rent or purchase should be available at different levels, whether it's a dream penthouse in Deansgate Gardens or a cosy flat in the Red Bricks. I think the Mancunian way of doing things should be to offer a city that everyone can feel a part of and that nobody is priced out of. I hope you found this video interesting, maybe even inspiring. Please like the video, post a comment and subscribe to receive all notifications because I don't currently have a fixed upload schedule. These videos can be quite time consuming to produce. Please support what I'm doing by making a coffee donation, links below. 
Vielen Dank fürs Zuschauen und auf Wiedersehen in Manchester.